Dr. Roger Kendrick. I'm uh, an independent wildlife consultant and um, most of my free time should be spent writing out the book on Hong Kong moths, but I spend far too much time on things like Facebook and iNaturalist, helping out people with identification, taxonomic issues of butterflies, moths, um, and running global symposia on conservation of butterflies and moths for Asia. But Hong Kong's been my home for 20, uh, 23 years now. Um, reason because it's such a wonderful place for biodiversity. It's one of the few places in the world where within half an hour walk from some of the major urban centers you can be in the middle of secondary forest that is uh, some of the most biodiverse areas in, in within a few hundred kilometers of here. Um, it's a bit of a golden green gem. <laughs> Learning how to look, opening your eyes, trying to discern plant from animal, plant from plant. What to look for when you're actually taking a photograph helps everybody else when it comes to the ID. Now, most people will look at this and say, okay, there's just a few plants growing on the bank here, uh, not much to look at. But take a little bit more time, then you start looking a little bit closer. Well, what actually on the leaf? Now, is it on top or is it underneath? Is it something that might be on one of the stems rather than on a leaf? start looking at things that are dead. A dead leaf might be a roll-up home for something. So even if it doesn't look quite right, actually especially if it doesn't <laughs> look quite right, check it out. So just here on cue oh. is something that isn't a leaf. It's a bug. Now how do I know it's a bug? Well it's got six legs so it's an insect. It's got a hard shell over the top. So it's not going to be something like a butterfly or a moth. Bugs and beetles have hard shells over the top. But if you look at the face, it's got a long, pointy tube. Stylus. For sucking. And bugs suck. Beetles chew. That's the easy way to tell the two apart. Beetles have chewing mouth parts. Bugs have a long straw-like mouth part. Now, how do I want to photograph it so that people can see what it is? So I'm going to have to zoom in a wee bit. A bit more. And you want to get it so that it's roughly in the middle of the picture. And then press the shutter and away you go. Now, if I'm doing it a little bit more professionally and go through the laptop computer, I use the camera instead. Now, around me, I've got several points I can use to rest on. Just make sure I'm not going to poke myself on anything silly. And I can use my arm as the third point to rest on and then the camera becomes much more stable and I can lean in get the photo and now that's kind of okay but you can't see everything that's a mm. side on shot and it gives you some of the key clues to get a full understanding of how to ID you need more than one shot generally a top shot dorsal view a side shot a lateral view will help and if you can and underneath a ventral view as well. <laughs> this is wild raspberry, Rubus reflexus. Can you eat it? You can indeed, and it fruits in summer. Remember that plants grow. They start as seedlings and get bigger. And the leaf shape can change from whether it's a small plant to a fully grown one. So sometimes what might be down here might be the same as something up there, but it has a different form. So if you're not sure, you can take, 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 and then choose the best ones to show. You know, if you can tell a story with a couple of pictures, do. Well, you can see on the outside, there's a Psychotria climber here. There's a different climber. There's a habitat of dead sticks, which invertebrates will use as a home. So you can pull that out, you'll find maybe spiders, mm. beetles, bugs, all sorts, using the shelter that's there. Maybe one leaf hosts stuff in the leaf. So you have here. An insect has created a gallery mine. And I think that's probably a fly that's done that, but there are moths that do that as well. So inside the leaf, there's a caterpillar. And as it eats through the leaf, it leaves this mine behind. And there's a trail of frass, poo, uh, where it's outputted what is eaten after digestion and each type of mine 
in certain parts of the world very distinctive. You get entomologists will be able to tell you which species of moth or fly just on the shape of the mine. If you hold the mine up to the light and look through so it becomes translucent mm. and take a photograph from the other side, you've got a good chance of finding out whether there's still something living inside. Now mines can be variable. They can be this sort of serpentine gallery. They can be like a blotch, like here. So you have a big blotch in the middle of the leaf, just looking like a bird dropping. You take a little bit of effort to look, you'll get the reward. On the tree trunk, you've got lichen. Now some of these lichens tell a story of pollution. Lichen is very sensitive to sulfur dioxide. So everything you see tells you about the environment in which these plants and animals are living and the impact we have upon them. The cutting of these trees may have strengthened them, producing three stems that might support the weight of the canopy in a typhoon, whereas a single stem tree might blow over in a typhoon. Um, how many millions of species do we have in the world? We don't know. In Hong Kong, we still don't know. We're not even close to knowing, but it's going to be. Um, we're probably talking several hundred thousand species. That's how much is out there or that we know so far? That's probably how much is out there. And we know... 20,000, 30,000, not much. And if we're looking at the moths and the butterflies, which are well studied compared to pretty much everything else, we only know about half. A little bit of patience can go a long way. And learning a little bit of field craft, going out with other people who've seen this sort of stuff before, learning from them. That's how it's been done in the past and it's how it will be done in the future. It's what we need to get back to, to get back to nature, to start reaching, looking, learning, feeling, and appreciating that we are part of what's around us, not separate from it.